This weekend, events marking the 150th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg begin. It is widely seen as the turning point of the Civil War. Jan Crawford went to the small Pennsylvania town where it was fought, and she found a surprising personal connection. It was the high watermark of the Confederacy, the closest the South came to victory and the North to defeat. And over 12,000 Confederate soldiers for over a mile along that tree line came out. William Troxell is mayor of Gettysburg and also a licensed guide to the battlefield. And as soon as they got out of the wooded area, the Union artillery opened up on them. But the Confederates kept coming. When they reached this wall, they came over the wall. And in this area where we are right now, this was hand-to-hand -hand combat. 160,000 men fought at Gettysburg. Some 50,000 soldiers north and south were killed or wounded. It was the bloodiest battle ever fought on American soil, and it changed the course of U.S. history. But to Mayor Troxell, it was just the other day. This is a picture of my mother and a Confederate soldier and me at 11 years old. The photograph was taken 75 years ago, during the 75th anniversary of the battle. About 1,800 Civil War veterans were there and met at the site of the Great Charge. And they had them line up, the Confederates on one side of the wall and Union troops on the other, and they reached across the wall and shook hands with each other. It was the last time the veterans were together, but their mementos and memories live on here at Gettysburg. Behind these doors is the collection of Gettysburg National Military Park, over a million historic artifacts, horse equipment, cartridge boxes. In a climate-controlled vault underneath the Museum and Visitor Center is a remarkable collection of documents, weapons, uniforms, and other artifacts that tell the story of the battle. This is actually the slouch hat of Major General Abner Doubleday. And on July 3rd, two pieces of shrapnel hit him in the head. I was going to ask, there's a hole there. I, I just, that's not from shrapnel. That is the hole from the shrapnel on July 3rd, right there and there. Wow. And he survived that? And he survived that. At Gettysburg, the past is always present. Growing up, I heard stories that my great-great-grandfather, W.T. Crawford, fought at the Battle of Gettysburg. But I didn't really know much about what he experienced until... The 48th Alabama, yeah, he would have fought right in this area over here. Scott Hartwig is a National Park Service historian. I mean, you came right... Of all places on the battlefield you came to, he's right here. There were photographs of the place where my great-great-grandfather fought. It's called the Slaughter Pen. The 48th Alabama would have actually come up to the edge of the woods over here, and they were firing across. So they exchanged fire for a long time. What do people need to understand about the significance of this battle, this place? Most Americans today believe we stand for equality, liberty, freedom for all, and we didn't all stand for that through a part of our history. That's what Lincoln talks about in the Gettysburg Address. Lincoln is talking about who we are as a nation. In that famous address, President Lincoln wrote it was important that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. For CBS This Morning, Jan Crawford, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Boy, Jan's great great grandfather would have been very proud of the work she did at the Supreme Court the other day. And she's got his, she clearly has his blue eyes. That's true. It's a great nice. piece. Great spot. I've always wanted to go there.